Good morning, family. Good morning, New Mount Zion. I would like to welcome all of you who are here, who are family and guests. It's so wonderful to see you. And those who are watching online, we say welcome to you as well. And those who will be watching later, you're welcome just as much. Amen? Amen. Well, today is a special day. Today is Mother's Day. And we are all so honored and thankful for our mothers that are here, represented, and for those that are not here but are so missed. We are so thankful to all our mothers, grandmothers, aunties, all of those who fill that role. We just want to say a hearty thank you. And we wish that God blesses you tremendously on this way in every way that you need. Amen? Amen. And so uh, as we begin this service, as I always stand before you, I don't want there to be any hindrance between you and God. So I'm going to ask you to search your, say, Lord, search my heart and show me anything in me that would prevent you from enjoying me this day. I want to give you a moment just so you can enjoy this service and give God all that he deserves of you. I don't want us to leave here different. I mean, I don't want us to leave here the same. We need to be different. And it's because we have given ourselves to God and he makes the difference. Amen. All right. Now, the verse I want to read today as we start this service is uh, Proverbs chapter three, verses uh, five and six. And this is a, a favorite of mine. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Amen. I now turn the service over to our deacon. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you in Jesus' name, Lord, for your goodness, your mercies, your blessings, your prosperity, your truth, your victory, and your favor in our lives. You tell us in your word, oh God, how to enter your house, enter into your gates with thanksgiving, enter into your, cave, your courts with praise. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, for salvation, eternal life, and abundant life that you've given us in Christ Jesus. We thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord, and blessing us to see and indeed to experience a brand new day in Christ Jesus. And we thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, for life, for health, and for strength. We thank you, O oh God, in Jesus' name, as we celebrate Mother's Day, O oh God. We all have mothers, some are still here, and some have gone. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, for the mothers that we have and the mothers that we've had. Father God, we just want to say thank you. Glory, hallelujah. Father God, we bless your name, Lord, in Jesus' name, for you're so worthy. Blessed, oh blessed, oh blessed, be your holy name. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, for you are the maker and the creator of heaven and earth and mankind and, and all living things and, and all powers in your hands, oh God. Oh glory, hallelujah. Blessed, oh blessed, oh blessed be your holy name. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, for you made the earth, oh God, by your great power. You established the world, Lord, by your great wisdom. You stretched out the heavens, oh God, by your great understanding. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Oh, glory, hallelujah. God and the Holy Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, thank you. And Father God, we pray that you bless this worship service, oh God. Bless us to have fertile hearts and fertile minds, Lord. Receptive to all that you would have us, oh God, to receive this day. And help us, oh God, in Jesus' name, Lord. Help us that we not withhold the praises that you deserve. Oh, glory, hallelujah. God and the Holy Father, in Jesus' name, thank you. We pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you bless the pastor, oh God, and his family. 
Watch over them, bless them, keep them, protect them. Guide them by your Holy Spirit, O oh God. We pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that the word goes forth with power and anointing, O oh God, in Jesus' name. O oh glory, hallelujah. God and the Holy Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Somebody ought to be able to say the Lord is good. We certainly praise his holy name on this day that the Lord has made and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Say happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers, mother figures. And we certainly acknowledge those who are celebrating mothers who are even in heaven at this time. Amen. Amen. We are certainly sensitive to the mothers who are grieving on this day because maybe they lost a child. I want to tell you, God is good. And he never leaves you, never forsakes you. At this time, I want to dismiss our young people ages 5 to 12 who have been registered. You'll meet Reverend Coleman there at the door to my right. Amen. Let's give our young people a hand as they... to hear from the word of God our praise team is doing a phenomenal job amen they're going to lead us in worship a song of meditation as we prepare to hear from God's word At the mention of your name, every knee will bow, every tongue confess that you are, you are Lord. Mm -hmm. It's at the mention of your name, every knee will bow, every tongue confess that you are, you are Lord. You are Lord. At the mention of your name, every knee must bow, every tongue confess. 
Yes, you are. Oh, Jesus, you are, Lord. Invite oh, him in. He'll meet oh, you at your knees. Hallelujah. Jesus, you are, Lord. say that for yourself on this morning and declare with your mouth Jesus you are Lord you're Lord over my life you're Lord in heaven you're Lord on earth you're Lord over my situation you're Lord over my emotions you're Lord over my mind you're Lord over my body. You're Lord over my heart. You're just Lord. Not just Lord, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And there is nobody that can keep you like Jesus. Father, we just thank you and we praise you. We honor you with our hearts, with our minds, with our thoughts. We come to your word on this morning, this Mother's Day morning. You are aware of every sigh of every soul. You know our every thought. You know our smiles and you know our sorrows. Have mercy on us on this morning. Let your word be preached in the way that it ought to be preached with your power and with your precision. And I know that you are able, so I gladly decrease. And as you would increase in this proclamation moment. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray together. All who agree, say amen. Amen again. Again, happy Mother's Day. On this day in which we celebrate the ministry of motherhood. And I'm going to ask if you would join me in... Your Bibles, your 21st chapter of Genesis. Genesis chapter 21. We'll begin reading at verse number nine. It says, Now Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian. Whom she had borne to Abraham mocking. Therefore she said to Abraham, Drive out this maid and her son, for the son of this maid shall not be an heir with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the lad and your maid. Whatever Sarah tells you, listen to her. For through Isaac your descendants shall be named. And of the son of the maid I will make a nation also because he is your descendant. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin or canteen of water. And gave them to Hagar. Putting them on her shoulder. And gave her the boy and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. And when the water in the skin was used up, 
she left the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went, sat down opposite him, about a bow shot away, for she said, do not let me see the boy die. And she sat opposite him and lifted up her voice and wept. God heard, someone say God heard, the lad crying. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, what is the matter with you, Hagar? Do not fear. For God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad and hold him by the hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the skin with water and gave the lad a drink. God was with the lad and he grew and he lived in the wilderness and became an archer. He lived in the wilderness of Paran and his mother took a wife for him from the land of Egypt. I want to preach on this morning only from the help of God's Holy Spirit from the subject, the God who hears. The God who hears. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The Bible says that he was born in Bethlehem to the Virgin Mary. He grew in stature, favor, and wisdom with both God his Father and with man. The Bible says that Jesus went to the cross and it is there that he died for the sins of the world. They took Jesus down from that cross laid him in a borrowed tomb but on the third day he did get up and the bible declares that he got up with all power in his hands it is good news on today to know that if you are born again jesus will hear your cry and it doesn't matter how faint the cry is or how low you may feel when you utter the cry or how far out you may feel when you cry to the Lord, he will hear your cry. The Bible is full of what we would call anthropomorphisms, which is another way of saying human characteristics attributed to a eternal God so that we can understand him a little bit better. For the Bible declares that God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, God is not on our level, but every now and then the Bible would describe him in a way in which we can understand. For example, God is a spirit. He's not on our level, but the Bible says that he has everlasting arms. That never get tired of holding you, never get tired of, of supporting you. He doesn't have arms like us, but he's described as having arms. God is described as having a hand that's so strong and so secure that if you're in God's hand, nobody can pluck you out. This hand of God that helps us and holds us and hides us in times of trouble. God, God is also described as seeing. While he may not have physical eyes like us, aren't you glad that God can see? The God who created eyes is not able, is unable to see. As a matter of fact, he sees what we cannot see. Help me today, Lord. He, and Psalm 139 says that he sees when we stand up. He sees when we sit down. And his sight is so insightful that he sees what we're going to say before we even say it. Aren't you glad that God is described as having a hand and having eyes? But listen, God is also described as a God who fights. That's why you ought not to have to try to fight everybody who wants to fight you, but just hold your peace. Stand still. 
And let the Lord fight your battle. This God who is described on a level in which we can understand not only has hands and eyes and, and he'll fight with those hands. But listen, God also feels. He, he feels what we feel. He, 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 if you are hurting and you're a child of God, guess what? He can feel that hurt. If you're tempted and you're a child of God, he knows what it's like because he sent his son who has been in all ways touched with our infirmities, yet he did not sin. He can be moved to anger, moved to compassion. And the Bible even says that God laughs. And every time you see God laughing, it's not funny. Because God laughs at those that think they don't need God. He laughs at those who mistreat other people like there is no God. And God has hands who can hold us. He has eyes that can see us. He has a heart that can feel us. He has a smile. He can smile upon you and give you his favor. But one thing I want to make sure that you don't leave this sanctuary or this virtual sanctuary without knowing is that God sees, God feels, God, God holds. But I want you to know God hears. Psalm 4 and 3 says, the Lord hears me when I cry unto him. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons why I love him like I do is because Psalm 116 says, I love the Lord because he heard my cry in the voice of my supplications. Anybody know what I'm talking about here? He, he will hear you. He will incline his ear. He'll bend down from heaven. To hear you. And on this Mother's Day, I, I want us to see the story of a mother, a brown skinned Nubian queen who God heard. I want you to see the story of a mother who God graciously met where she was. The story of a mother that demonstrates God's grace and God's goodness. But I also got to tell you that the gospel of Jesus Christ is on every page of this book. So not only is it a story of a mother who God dealt graciously with, but if the Lord would grant us the grace to see it, you will also see the story of sinners who have been saved by grace. This story of a woman by the name of Hagar has three movements within it. There are three breaks in her life. And the first break that I want you to see within her story is a break up. A break up. This particular break up that Hagar endured was not the breakup of a husband and a wife. This breakup that Hagar endured was really the consequences of a complicated situation. Hear me well on today. If you read your Bible, the Bible does not sugarcoat how bad we can be sometimes as humans. It just shows that God is good and he offers us his grace. I'm glad the Bible doesn't sugarcoat it because when I first started reading the Bible, I, I couldn't get past all of the D's and the dows and the, and the, and the, and the hitherto's and, and the begats. But one thing I could see is there was a lot of drama in the Bible. I mean, more drama than the uh, Housewives of Atlanta. Somebody going to hear me here on today. If you, if you read your Bible, you want to see what we are really like, open up that Bible. God told Abraham and Sarah, I know you're old. I know you've already, uh, you're seasoned. You already have social security. You're, you're retired. You're, you're in the golden years, but I'm going to give you a son. But you know how it is for us. Sometimes we hear what God said, but we don't want to wait on it. Uh, we want God to do it in the microwave, but God doesn't always do it right away. And so Sarah told Abraham, I tell you what, Abraham, I, I think God is taking too long. And so what you ought to do is take Hagar and y'all get together and maybe God is going to give you a son through her. Let me give you the Cliff Notes version. Abraham did not say no. <laughs> Abraham said, if you insist, Sarah gave Abraham a whole pass. 
Somebody going to hear me here on, on this morning. And, 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 and Abraham and Hagar got together and lo and behold, they kept looking. And Hagar's belly kept growing. And the greater her belly grew, the greater Sarah's animosity for Hagar grew. She saw that Hagar was pregnant and she said, Abraham, you did this. And she's got to go. Let me just stop here and say this on my way to, to the point here. Whenever you see a man with more than one woman, he got some problems. Y'all can research that for yourself. Whenever you see a man with two wives or more than one wife, he's going to have some problems because you can't give all to both of them. But anywho, we come back to this and we see now that she says she's got to go and sends her away while she is with child, but God saw about her. Well, you fast forward. 16 years later, Hagar has had her child, but now it's time to celebrate the child of the promise instead of the child of the flesh. Uh, the flesh was Sarah and Abraham's idea, but Isaac was God's idea. And as they are celebrating the two-year weaning ceremony of Isaac, Ishmael is who is who is Hagar's son and Abraham's son is just doing what what kids do he begins to mock Isaac Sarah says this is the last I've had of Hagar and Ishmael she says they have to go and this time they got to stay gone Abraham is a good father he doesn't want to be separated from his child but God says listen You've got to make a difficult decision. I want you to see Hagar here because Hagar, by no fault of her own, is the victim of a system now that has caused a separation between mother and father and a separation between son and father. Hear me and hear me well because the pulpit is where it needs to be said from. There are systems in the nation we live in right now that incentivize a father not being in the house. I'm not, you, you can say amen if you want to, but I'm going to tell the truth here. Because, because if the government wants to give you something and as long as a man is not in the house, you can have it. That's not a gift. Because regardless of what people say in this nation and in this world, a man can't be a mama. A man cannot be a mother and a mother can't be a father. I don't care how you paint it. I don't care how you try to redraw it or redefine it. A man is a man and a woman is a woman. And so we see now a mother without a fatherly influence and we see a son in his teenage years that's going to be without a father all because of a complicated complex breakup this breakup led to a departure the bible says that Abraham did what he had to do and he sent them away when he sent them away they were wandering in the wilderness this mother and this son, because of this break up, have to wander in the wilderness. But I don't want to skip past it. I want you to see something here. In verse number 14, it said that he took some bread. He said, man, I'm going to give you some bread. I'm going to give you this canteen or this skin of water. He gave them to Hagar. And the Bible says he put all of it on her shoulder. This breakup not only caused a departure and a separation, but it caused an unnatural delegation. Hear me and hear me well on today. I thank God for mothers. I thank God for the ministry of motherhood. We celebrate mothers. Nobody in this world came into this world without a mother. Do I have a witness here? But, but, but let me just stop and say something to the fathers because don't you put everything on the mother's shoulder. It's not 
up to the mother to carry what the mother is supposed to carry and what the father is supposed to carry. I'm going to preach here anyhow. He put it all on her shoulder. He said, I give you the best I can. Listen, she couldn't put him on child support. She couldn't get food stamps. She didn't get SSI. She didn't get any of that. He sent her away and said, it's on you now. I'm going to challenge the men if you do the deed. Take care of the seed. But somebody say, here he put it on her shoulder. And guess what? She carried it. She carried it until she couldn't carry it anymore. The Bible said this breakup caused a unnatural delegation, a departure. They are wandering in the wilderness with no direction, no destination. They are weary, wandering through the wilderness of Beersheba with dry, barren land that is hot and full of flint and full of gravel. And the Bible says at a certain point, the water that Abraham gave them ran out. And so this breakup led to unnatural delegation, a departure, and it also led to destitution. The Bible in verse number 15 says, when the water in the skin was used up, this destitution led Hagar to despair. The Bible says she left the boy under one of the bushes. Holy Spirit won't let me move on right now because there, there, there are some maybe right now on today or maybe you're listening. You're upset with your mother. Maybe you feel like she didn't do all for you that she could have done. But you never know what she was going through. You never know what she was enduring. Let me stay here for a moment. Maybe some are upset with God. Because God took your mother at an early age. And I came to tell you, God can take care of you. And while your mother may not be replaced, God can give you what you need. And if your mama was saved, then you are saved. You will see her again and never will you be separated from her ever again. This breakup led to despair. I told you there are three breaks in this particular text. The first one is a break up, but this break up led Hagar to a breakdown. The breakdown is in verse number 16. The Bible said, then she went and sat down opposite him. She sat down. She had been carrying burdens, but now she sat down. And the Bible says she sat down from a distance from her son and listened to what she said to herself. Do not let me see the boy die. In the ministry of motherhood, in the ministry of parenthood, there are times in that particular ministry where all you can do is lay that child down and trust God. Trust God to see about them. Look at what she did. She said, I am hopeless. I, she, she already says he's not going to make it. She already says he's not going to be here for long. And she sits down with hopelessness. But not only is she hopeless, but she's hurting. Anybody ever been hurting? Anybody ever had to go through times of despair like this? And listen, it's one thing for you to be hurt, but it's another thing to see your child hurting. Somebody going to help me here on today. It's one thing for you to go through it, but it's another thing to see your child going through it. And not only that, what makes it worse is there are some things that our children have to go through that we can't go through with them. Do I have a witness here who's ever had to sit down and throw up your hands and say, Lord, you brought them in this world if you're ready. Ready, you can take them out but the same way you kept me I'm trusting you to keep my child she's hurting I know she's hurting she's crying some tears anybody ever had to cry tears not because of what you did but because of what your children are going through because of the world that you see your children having to grow up in it'll make you cry the Bible says that she is hopeless and she is 
hurting. She, the Bible says she sat down, but she lifted up her voice and she wept. I've got good news for you. Even if you feel like your hope is gone, it doesn't mean your help is gone. And I'm glad that God's ability to help me is not based on my up and down emotions. And I'm glad that God's ability to not only help us, but the generation that is coming behind us is not based on our ability to be strong all the time. Is there anybody here on this morning? Who's willing to say there have been some things I've seen, some things I've heard, some things i felt that have literally knocked me off of my feet. All I could do is lift up my voice. And when I tried to say what I should have said, all I could do was cry. Anybody ever had to cry? Somebody's crying in your soul right now, but I came to tell you God will help you. And so you might as well keep your hope in him. This hope we have is an anchor for the soul. That is both steadfast and unmovable. Is there anybody here on today that might say mama is gone. But my hope is still here. And, and, and while I'm at it, I thank God I had a praying mama. I still got one. But somebody knows that you know what it is. Uh, your mama to give you all that she could. And when she couldn't give you any more, God stepped right in. Yes, he did. He had somebody to come right alongside you and say, your mama may be gone, but I'll be a mother figure for you. And even if you didn't have that, we serve a God who's a mother for the motherless. And while I'm at it, he's a father for the fatherless. Do I have a witness here who knows that God is worth praising and I'll keep my hope in him even when I'm hurting? I mean, the breakup was bad enough. But now she is broken down. The Bible says she lifted up her voice and wept. Hmm. Whenever you endure a separation, whatever it may be, it may be relationship-wise, it may be separating from a dream or ambition, it may be separation from a friend, well, whatever it may be, whenever you endure a breakup, know that God can hold you down. Whenever you find yourself in the midst of a breakdown, know that God can lift you up. And so I told you here that there was a breakup. And there was also a breakdown, but the last break is a breakthrough. And that's found in verse number 17. And the first word of verse number 17 is God. I came to tell you, whatever breakthrough you need on today, whatever breakthrough you've ever experienced, it always begins with God. I want to say something to somebody here because Hagar had been down before, but she had never been down like this. 16 years earlier, Hagar was pregnant with Ishmael and she wanted to change her situation. She wanted out of that situation. She didn't want to stay in the state that she was in and she ran away and, and really was ready to leave this world. But God met her right where she was. 16 years early and she cried out she says I'm in an unfair situation how am I going to deal with this baby on my own how am I going to provide for this child how am I going to see my way through but the Bible says that God met her and let her know I've got plans for that boy he, he's, he's in your belly he's in your womb but I already have plans for him I've got a prenatal purpose for that child and it may look bad right now but I want you to go back and I want you to have that baby because that baby is my idea not your idea and I've got something that I'm going to do with them and you may think it may not be right Lord help me today because it was out of wedlock you might think it was might not be right because it happened this way or that way but I came to tell you Psalm 127 says children are a gift from the Lord don't care how they come wrapped, they're still a gift every child born on purpose for a purpose and if they are here they are a gift Bible said after God met her there in chapter 16 and after God met her there she, she said you know what I thought I was running away and I thought nobody could see how I felt she said you know what I know something about God I didn't know God sees 
That's what she called them in, in, in chapter number 16. She said, God sees. Aren't you glad that God sees? He sees where you are. He sees where you're going. He sees how you feel. He sees what you need before you can even open up your mouth and tell him what you need. I'm so glad that God sees. But what do you do when you understand chapter 16, but now you're in chapter 21? God, it's good to know that you see. I'm glad that you see. I'm, I'm glad that you can see what I'm going through. I'm glad that you can see what I need. But Lord, I don't just need your eyes. I need your ears. I need you to hear where I am. Well, in her breakthrough, the Bible said that God heard the lad crying. Hagar was crying too, but, but God heard the boy crying. And in this breakthrough, there was a declaration that came from a heavenly location. The Bible said that the angel of the Lord cried out to Hagar from heaven. And listen, when you hear a word from heaven, you ought to be assured that if God heard you in heaven and spoke to you from heaven, certainly he can help you on earth. God is a God who dwells in heaven. But listen, if you call out to him and say, Lord, let your will be done on earth. As it is in heaven, God will hear your cry. The Bible said that this angel of the Lord called out from heaven, from a heavenly location. But he didn't start off by just talking to her. He started with an interrogation. And the Bible said that this angel of the Lord said to Hagar, Hagar, what is the matter with you? Boy, isn't it great to serve a God? That's willing to take its focus, if you will, off a hole in the stars in the sky. And rotating the earth on its axis and, and, and causing the sun to take its place. Just to ask you and just to ask me what's wrong. Uh-huh. And, and, but, but she didn't answer because, listen, sometimes you hurt so bad you can't even tell what's wrong. Somebody know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever saw someone crying or maybe you were crying and you're trying to ask them what's wrong and the more you ask them, the more they cry. The Bible said, he said, with an interrogation, what is the matter with you, Hagar? And then he gave a consolation. She didn't answer, but he gave a reassurance. He said, do not fear. I know it seems like you're all alone and it's just you and your son, but do not fear. He gave her this reassurance because of a reason. The angel of the Lord said this. He said, God has heard the voice of the lad. Hey, God, I know you've been praying and you've been lifting up your voice. I know you called the church and told them to pray. I know you told circle number one and circle number two to pray. I know you put his name on the prayer list and I know you posted on Facebook, pray for my son. No, no questions, no inboxes, no DMs. Y'all just pray. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I know you've been telling people to pray. I know you've been praying, but I need to tell somebody here something here on today. You can pray for your children all day long, but sooner or later, God will put them in a position to where they can pray for themselves. Aren't you glad about that? I'm glad on today. I'm getting happy about it. I'm, I'm on my way here because, listen, I'm glad somebody prayed for me and had me on their mind and took the time to pray for me. But sooner or later, you've got to pray for yourselves. And what, what, what she didn't know, she knew that she was praying, but she was too far from the boy to know that he was praying. Uh, and she thought that God could see, but she didn't know that God who could see can also hear as well. But I need to tell somebody here something on this morning. She should have known. Because in chapter number 16, when she said God sees, God was already preparing her for chapter number 21. She said, God, I'm so glad you see. But God said, hey, God, let me tell you something. Name the boy Ishmael. Which means God hears. And the Bible said that he was crying where he was and she remembered what God had said about him. When you are in the midst of a breakthrough, you will hear a declaration from God. It's the word that gives me my breakthrough. It's the spirit of God that places the word on the tablet of our souls that gives us a breakthrough. Uh, but not only will you hear a declaration from God, but God will give you directions concerning what he has declared to you. 
God said to Hagar, I know you're tired and I know you've been bearing this burden. It seems like all by yourself. I know it seems like nobody cares and it seems like you're in the middle of nowhere, but I've got some directions for you. I know you're tired and I know you've been carrying this burden, but the first thing I need you to do is get up from where you are. He said, Hagar, arise. I need you to muster the strength. And if you don't have the strength, I give you the strength to get up from where you are. Because I want Ishmael to get up. And the only way Ishmael is going to get up is if you help him up. Do I have a witness here on today? And so he said, I need you to arise from where you are. And I know you're tired, but I give you just a little more strength. And I give you just a little more mercy to take your hand and put your hand in the hand of your child. Uh, don't give up on them. Uh, don't write them off. Uh, don't think that all is lost. Uh, put your hand in his hand. And I'll put enough strength in your hand to where you put your hand in his hand. Uh, you'll be able to pick him up. Uh, do I have a witness here on this morning? Uh, has ever felt the strength of the Lord? Uh, as you tried to be the best mother that you could be. Uh, or tried to be the best father you could be. Uh, the best grandmother and grandfather. Uh, and God gave you the strength. Uh, you didn't know how you were gonna stay up uh, uh, let alone help somebody else up uh, uh, but God came and saw about you uh, and God was able to give you all you needed uh, uh, to support your child uh, and to support your children uh, uh, we'll flip the record over uh, and play the other side uh, is there anybody here on today uh, who had a mother uh, you know that she uh, was at a wit's end uh, you know she was weary uh, you know she was wandering uh, but somehow uh, she put food on your table uh, or somehow uh, she was able to support you uh, do I have a witness here uh, God gave Hagar direction said you put your hand in the hand of Ishmael and the reason why I want you to do it is because he may be down right now but where he is is not where he's going to finish I'm decreeing something about that child's life I want to tell you something that I already told you but I need to remind you of my plans he said I will make a great nation out of him is there anybody here who knows that God does have plans for our children huh, that we can't see right now. Huh. They may be down, huh, but don't you leave them. Huh. They may be wrong, huh, but don't you leave them. Huh. They may be unruly sometimes, huh, but don't give up on them. Huh. Put your hand in their hand, huh, and while you're at it, huh, tell them huh, there's a God who sees, huh, there's a God who hears, huh, there's a God who will huh, walk with you and talk with you. Huh. Do I have a witness here? Huh. He gave a direction. Huh. He said, you get up and you lift him up because I'm going to make a great nation out of Ishmael and then the Bible says he gave her discovery he opened her eyes and she saw a well of water that well had been there uh, the whole time. Uh, but ain't, aren't you glad today uh, that we serve a God uh, who can open doors uh, that you cannot see? Uh, I'm trying to make my way here uh, to my seat. Uh, but all I'm trying to say here uh, is that God hears. Uh, and not only does he hear, uh, but God will provide. Uh, the Bible says uh, it seemed like uh, they were in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but God can give you water uh, in a wilderness situation. Uh, the Bible says she took the water uh, and gave it to the boy. Uh, and when she gave the boy the water, uh, he got up from where he was. Uh, but not only did he get up, uh, uh, but he grew up uh, and became a great nation. Uh, I'm glad about it now uh, because a breakup uh, uh, that may lead to a breakdown uh, uh, doesn't mean you have to stay down. Uh, but God is a God uh, uh, who will give you a breakthrough. Uh, and maybe you thought on today I was just talking about uh, a mother and her son, uh, but I'm talking about all of us uh, because all of us uh, had a breakup with God. Uh, uh, sin separates us uh, from a holy God. Uh, the same way Ishmael uh, started off mocking, uh, uh, we were enemies of God, uh, uh, separated from him uh, because all have sinned uh, and come short of the glory of God. Uh, we had a breakup uh, with a mighty God, uh, not because he left. Uh, 
but because we left. But I'm so glad that God sent his son, Jesus Christ. Anybody here today know who Jesus is? God sent Jesus down, even though we had a breakup, so that you and I could have a chance at a makeup. Is there anybody here who can testify on today and even tell your children, I hadn't always been what I am right now. I hadn't always walked the straight and narrow and truth be told I'm not where I should be but I'm so glad that every day of our lives God keeps keeping us every day God keeps blessing us and even though we had a breakup with God that breakup led us to a breakdown we were without hope without God in the world not fit to live not ready to die the wages of sin is death or just like Ishmael was laying on his deathbed all of us have been at the doorstep of death but aren't you glad that God demonstrated his love and that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us we had a breakup that led to a breakdown but I'm so glad God gave me a breakthrough where's the breakthrough at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away it was there by faith I received my sight and now I'm happy all the day just like Ishmael was ready to die from thirst our souls were parched our souls were thirsty and only the spirit of God could quench that thirst I'm glad on this mother's day that Jesus laid down his life he died right in front of his mother I heard Jesus say a mother behold your son a son behold your mother but he died anyway he died so that we might live took Jesus down from that cross laid Jesus in a borrowed tomb but early early a Sunday morning he got up all power all power all power all power in his hands a power to keep you a power to hold you a power to forgive you a power to lead you a power to lift you a power to provide and my God shall provide all of your needs according to his riches in glory anybody here know you got a breakthrough anybody here know he came down so that we can go up well if you know like I know tell God thank you if you know like I know tell God my hallelujah belongs to you thank you for my mother thank you for my grandmother well thank you Lord I can make it without a mother I can make it without a grandmother but I can't make it without the Lord. God took care of her. He'll take care of you. May not be able to see how he's going to do it. He'll do it. He knows where you are. He knows what you need. Doors of the church are open. You're here on this morning and you are not saved. You do not trust Jesus as your savior. You may not feel it, may not acknowledge it, but your soul is broke down. And the only way for that soul to be lifted and saved is through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're here on this morning and you're without a church home. Thank you, Lord. Without a church home, the doors of this church are open. 
It's not my church. It's the Lord's church. Thank you, Jesus. It belongs to him. It's his word. It's his spirit. And we are his people. He is our shepherd. Doors are open if you're in need of a church home, a place to worship, a place, place to grow in the word, a place to broaden your witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're here on this morning and you are in need of rededication, you say, well, I, I know the Lord, but I've just been far from him. Doors open. There's nothing better, there's nothing better than knowing Jesus, than knowing Jesus. He is sweeter as the day, he is sweeter as the day. Oh, we bless your holy name we thank you for your grace your goodness your compassion Lord we thank you for your power and the power of your word we thank you father God for adding to your church we thank you Lord for those who've come back home we thank you for those that have found a home Lord it's your doing we praise you. We ask, Lord, that your word would find fertile ground in the soul, soil of our souls. And we bless your name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Lord, we pray for mothers. Pray, Father God, that you would continue to provide. You know what is needed. We pray for those, Father God, that have, mothers have gone on to be with the Lord. Bless them in a special way on today, Father God. In an assuring way, Father God. Invigorate their zeal for you. And assure their hearts and minds before you. We pray for those mothers, Father God, who have lost children on today. 
Lord, you and your sovereign will decided to call from this earth's labor to heavenly reward. Even those that have lost before even birth, we lift them up to you on today. And we know you know, you see, you're there. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 We thank God. The church say praise the Lord. The church say hallelujah. Certainly God is worthy of all of our praise. Young people who are, maybe you're listening, our instructors over in the fellowship hall, if you will begin making your way to the foyer. God is good. And I tell you what, he I love him. And I don't have to be pastor in a church to love him or preaching to love his word. I just love him. Amen. 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 I want to commend our uh, audio visual ministry. Amen. Brother Kendrick and those who have continued to serve in that capacity. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's getting better and better every Sunday. Do you agree with that? I mean, I thank God. Thank you, sir. The wonderful job that you were doing. And we are a church who is looking to continue to grow in every way that we can. Amen. Continue to improve. We all can grow. Certainly, we want to acknowledge um, this Mother's Day. And in my reading this week, I read a quote. And I said, if I remembered, I would share it on today. And the ministry of motherhood, and it is a ministry. It is a ministry. It's so profound uh, that the words of a mother are like megaphones in the hearts of her children. And many of us know that to be true. We can remember words that were spoken to us. Remember words that were passed down to us. And uh, we want to be mindful of, to be good stewards of those words. Make every word count for the glory of God. Amen. I want to remind you of our church, church's 93rd anniversary. Our church's 93rd anniversary that will be taking place will begin on Wednesday May the 18th, there will be a dinner, fellowship dinner, and family night, and the, the committee is planning a wonderful time of commemoration and celebration, and I'm looking forward to it. I love this church. Thank God for this church. It, it's a privilege to serve this church. I know God has many churches, but I thank God for this one. Amen. And so we want to remember that that Wednesday is family night, and um, that will begin at 6 p.m. And then that following Sunday, which is the fourth Sunday, we will celebrate our 93rd church anniversary. And the theme is generational grace. Generational grace. And that's another way of saying the same God who was with us can be with the next generation. And he hadn't forgot how to save. He hadn't forgot, forgotten how to raise up witnesses for himself. And he's going to do it. And he's going to use us in that capacity. I want to uh, give a word, uh, also a word of uh, celebration. I'm so happy to announce that the new Mount Zion clothes closet. Amen. After a two-year pandemic hiatus, it's back like they never left. Do I have a witness? And they are, want to thank everyone who came and donated on yesterday. And want to let you know that um, the Women's Mission will be receiving Close um, on this Saturday, May 19th, uh, during the hours of 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Amen. Someone say amen. Amen. People are in need, and we want to meet that need. And 
And listen, if you won't wear it now, if, if, if it's too raggedy for you to wear, <laughs> get it stitched up. Take it to Sister Eula Goodman. She could sew anything. And then bring it. <laughs> yeah. Thank God for that. We are a growing church. Um, there are many new members, many that are in the process of completing the new members orientation, um, have traveled for various needs and, and to celebrate various uh, events. But at this time, I do have three certificates three individuals who have completed their new members orientation. I want to ask our primary instructor, Brother Travis, if you would just come and uh, stand here um, in this place. Amen. Give him a hand as he come. He's doing a phenomenal job. If I wasn't an older member, I'd go to new members just to hear him. It's found him and Deacon Brown. Wave your hand, Deacon Brown. Amen. <laughs> Sister Pearson and Amen. And others that are working hard. If you're here, maybe you may be watching virtually, but if, you, if you're here physically, you come and receive your certificate. Brother Ronald Davis. Ronald Davis. Praise God. Sister Beverly King. Beverly King. All right. And Sister Amanda Pache Pacheco. Amanda Pacheco. Praise God. Thank God for you. Amen. Let's give him another hand and, and praise God for his goodness. At this time, we have a special presentation for all of our mothers who are present. I'm going to ask our young people to prepare to come on down. Ask all of our mothers who are able to please stand. Mothers biologically, mothers by way of adoption. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Give these young people a hand as they come to distribute these, these flowers. Amen. So young people, if you would see. All right. Listen, this is beautiful on a lot of levels. <laughs> It is beautiful to see the mother standing. It's beautiful to see our young people. Look at these young people. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. And we want to, for the clothes closet, the 14th, the 14th, the 14th, not the 19th, the 14th. All right, young people, if you would, you see all of our, our beautiful mothers who are standing, would you take those flowers and give to each of them a flower. All right. Amen. Let's give Sister Montgomery a hand. Wonderful job she's doing. To our mothers after you receive your special gift if you would be seated so they will know who to give it to Thank you. 
Amen. Have all of our mothers been honored? All of our mothers who are present been honored. All right, and it looks like we have an overflow. Amen. That's how God does it, though. Amen. A God of more than enough. And so we are asked some of these young men to stand next to our deacons as they uh, receive the offering on the way out. Some of these young men to stand next to them and all, all of our mothers who desire more flowers, extra flowers, you can receive those on your way out of service. Amen. Well, I'm thinking about it. You all see these young men that are standing here, these young ladies? Amen. I'm claiming that these are your youth usher boy. Well, go ahead and say it. They're going to be ushering and they're going to be singing. In the, in the words of my grandmother, which one you going to do? Because you're going to do something. Amen. Give our young people another hand. Before we close on this, uh, this Mother's Day, the Bible says honor your mother and your father, and um, certainly that's something that we want to do. And at this time, there's a special woman who is the most seasoned, the most seasoned mother within our church body, within our church body. And that special individual is Sister Mary Robinson. Amen. Sister Robinson present. All right. All right. I'm coming your way. You all give her a hand. We thank God for the longevity, the perseverance, and then had a right mind to come into the house of the Lord on this morning. take this opportunity uh, to uh, say a word of honor uh, for my mother certainly honor you as my mother who brought me into this world and thank God for your care your nurture and your compassion and I don't want to miss a mother's day uh, without telling you thank you thank you and thank God for you amen I have a biological mother who I love and also have a mother in love. Amen. Sister Gloria Thompson, you wave your hand. And certainly, um, it's in the same case as my mother, my wife and I truly love you. And I remember a couple of years ago, we were in Sarasota and thinking that we would be planted there. And my wife said to me, she said, next Mother's Day, I want to have Mother's Day with my mother. And I had no idea how that was going to look, that it was going to look like it does now with us being back home. But thank God. Thank God for that. Amen. And last but not least, my baby, my wife, I want you to stand, please. Amen. 
Not only the mother of my children, not just a baby mama, but my wife. She's my wife, whom I love. And I know Janiah is saying, well, you're going to ask me to stand up? Stand up, Janiah. Come help me. And this is from New Mount Zion and from me. Give that to your mama. Amen. Love you. Let us stand. We thank God for this service and all who have been instrumental in bringing it to pass. We praise the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you. And Lord, we honor you. We thank you for your goodness and we thank you for your provision. We ask that whatever the need is on this day, that you would meet it in a way that proves that you are God and God alone. We thank you for New Mount Zion. We thank you for your work within her. And we ask, Lord, you would continue to grow us and mature us in your word, in our worship, and in our witness. We thank you for the gifts. We thank you for offerings. We thank you for those who are giving generously, willingly, and cheerfully. And we ask that you would continue to bless it and use it for your will on earth as you have already decreed in heaven. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now, henceforth, and forever. Let us all say amen. 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 Happy Mother's Day. Have a wonderful Sunday. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Oh, for he is good. Yes, he for is he good. Is work. For he is good. Thank you.